Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing the Mingda Magician X2. I reviewed the Magician X printer two years ago and it was an affordable mid-range printer. This year, Mingda launched an improved version that shares many of the same components but also includes a few upgrades. Just like the original version, the Magician X2 is an i3 style bed slinger with a print volume of 230 by 230 by 260, which is slightly larger than a standard Ender 3. The extruder is a modified BMG style dual gear direct drive, and the printer has a dual Z axis with two stepper motors controlled by two independent stepper drivers accompanied by two optical limit switches, so it should be able to level the gantry automatically. The X and Y axis also use optical limit switches. The motherboard is a 32-bit board with silent stepper drivers. It also includes other features commonly found in mid-range printers, such as belt tensioners, a color touchscreen, and a filament sensor. It supports USB drive and full-size SD card printing. Similar to the original Magician X, custom injection molded parts are used throughout the machine, resulting in a solid overall build and appearance. In addition to these features carried over from the original Magician X, the X2 has several upgrades. It now includes a textured PEI print surface, more durable ribbon cables, and a groove for the heated bed cable. The maximum nozzle temperature has been increased to 300 degrees Celsius with the latest firmware, allowing for the printing of engineering grade materials like nylon carbon fiber and polycarbonate when you use the optional high temperature hot end, which costs $30. I would like to thank Mingda for sending me this machine to review. And with that, let's get started. Let's take a look at the components of this printer. We have the gantry, the base, a print head, filament holder, an extra high temperature hot end, a toolbox, and cable. Putting this machine together will just take 10 to 15 minutes, and after that we will start with auto bed leveling. It's going to heat up the nozzle to 150 degrees Celsius and the bed to 50 degrees Celsius. As the machine is using a strain gauge for bed leveling, it's going to probe the bed with the nozzle and do a 16 point leveling. After that, we need to set the Z offset and load some filament for our first print. To set up this printer in Kira, I created a custom FFF printer. I put my print profiles for different materials I tested in this video under the description. I will start with the simple PLA Benchy to make sure everything is working. It took 1 hour and 36 minutes, and the result is decent. The layers, surface, and overhanging look alright, and the cooling also looks fine. Next, I will print the Jeep. The estimated print time is 8 hours and 18 minutes. The print finished in 8 hours and 30 minutes, and the print quality seems quite nice. The details on the door and wheels are clear, and besides the tiny bit of imperfection in this area, I have no other complaints. Then, I will print the Robo Alpaca from Prusa. The estimated print time is almost 13 hours.
The print finally took 13 hours and 12 minutes to finish, and the print quality is pretty good. The one on the left is printed by the Prusa MK3S Plus, the one in the middle is printed by the Magician X2, and the one on the right is printed by the Prusa MK4. The print quality of the X2 is similar to the MK3S Plus, but the surfaces on both of them are not perfect. The one printed by the MK4 is the best when you look closely at the details, but from 2-3 to three feet away, all three are printed pretty nicely. Next, I will print a honeycomb drawer tower. This print requires an excessive amount of retraction, so I will see how this extruder handles it. It took 8 hours and 36 minutes to finish. The retraction of the extruder is pretty accurate, and all the patterns were finished without issues. There is a tiny bit of stringing, but the overall print quality of this tough model is pretty good. Then, I will print two drawers and speed up the machine to 150mm per second. Generally, printing a drawer like this would take around 2.5 to 3 hours, but when printing at 150 millimeters per second at a 0.25 millimeter layer height, printing two of them just takes around 2 hours. As this model has simple geometry and doesn't require much cooling, I don't think it should be a problem. These two drawers finally finished in 2 hours and 7 minutes. I won't say they're perfect, as the surface is a little rough. But for simple functional parts like these drawers, I would be happy to print both of them in 2 hours instead of 5 to 6 hours. I will also print when using ABS at the same speed. The print also finished in a little over an hour and it looks okay. As there is no input shaper on this version of Marlin firmware, the surface is still not very clean. But for functional parts, this kind of fast printing quality is still acceptable for me. With glue applied, the corners of this ABS drawer also didn't warp at all. After that, I will try some PETG. I will print this trash can using vase mode. Generally, when you print at 50 millimeters per second, the first layer on the outer wall will only be printed at half that speed, which is 25 millimeters per second. But since I know this extruder can melt filament pretty quickly after it printed those drawers at a higher speed, I will speed everything up to 50 millimeters per second and see how it handles PETG with a slightly higher speed. The print took 2 hours and 17 minutes. The surface is good, and I can't see speeding it up causes any issues. The inside also looks alright. When the print first started, the bottom of the back was printed a bit rough. It's still not perfect, but it's not too obvious once the print is finished. Then, I will try some TPU. At first, the result didn't look good, because as you can see, my TPU is moist. I've had it open for a while, and the weather is getting warmer, so it may have absorbed too much moisture. So I will open a new row and try to print the same G-code again.
This time, the result is almost perfect. The layers are beautiful and the Airy One TPU is also very soft. As Mingda sent me a high temperature hot end, I will switch to it and print some nylon carbon fiber. The stock firmware has limited the maximum nozzle temperature to 260 degrees Celsius, so you need to update to the latest firmware to reach a 300 degrees Celsius nozzle temperature. I will print a wrench from 3dprintedhardware.com. If you're interested in their design, I put a link under the description. I applied some glue on the bed and started the print. Surprisingly, this PACF wrench is printed pretty nicely. It's awesome to see a budget printer handling engineering grade materials so well. I will try one more design from 3dprintedhardware.com, a nose plier. This time, I will use polycarbonate. The print finished in 2 hours and 23 minutes. I needed to use a razor blade to cut the middle part to make the plier functional. I'm not sure how rigid this plier is, but it is functional and the print quality of polycarbonate on this X2 is also pretty good. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. Like other printers in the Magician series, the build quality of the Magician X2 is solid. It uses injection molded parts, which is a significant upgrade compared to 3D printed parts and other more generic parts commonly found in budget machines. While injection molding may not directly improve print quality, these parts tend to be more reliable and durable. 2. In terms of print quality, the Magician X2 performs well and is on par with other mid-range printers. When printing at a normal speed of 50 to 60 millibits per second, the print quality is comparable to that of the Prusa MK3S Plus. The dual gear extruder works smoothly and the hot end efficiently melts the filament. 3. There are no leveling knobs under the bed. Instead, the Magician X2 has a one piece injection molded plate to support the print bed, which provides sturdy support. The strain gauge bed leveling sensor works effectively, and I had no issues with print adhesion during my tests. 4. The hot end of the Magician X2 is swappable, and Mingda provided me with the high temperature hot end. With this upgraded hot end, I was able to successfully print with nylon carbon fiber and polycarbonate at temperatures up to 300 degrees Celsius. It's quite impressive that a printer in this price range can handle engineering grade materials so well. 5. This machine is one of the quietest machines I have ever tested. I place the sound meter two feet away. When the part cooling fan is off, the noise level is around 40 to 43 decibels. And when the fan is on, it ranges from the mid 40s to the low 50s in terms of decibels. Six, unlike a regular dual Z axis that relies on a timing belt, the Magician X2 uses dual limit switches on the Z axis along with independent stepper drivers controlling the dual stepper motors. 
I tried intentionally tilting the gantry, and when I homed the machine, it automatically adjusted and re-leveled the gantry. This feature provides a significant advantage compared to timing belt systems or other configurations that have only one stepper driver controlling dual-C axis movements. Now for the cons. One, the packaging. While most 3D printers typically use laser foam for protection, the Magician X2 comes packaged with styrofoam. You need to use a vacuum to clean them up, as some pieces can find their way into the aluminum extrusions, lead screws, connectors, and other gaps. Even if the machine is good, the styrofoam packaging definitely has a negative impact on first impressions. 2. The Quick Swap Hot End While it is indeed swappable, I wouldn't call it a quick swap hot end. To access it, you need to unscrew three screws to open the cover, and then remove two more screws to detach one of the part cooling fans, as the fan is blocking you from accessing the set screw for loosening the hot end. Additionally, the stock hot end uses three zip ties for cable management. Although it is optional, you might still want to consider retightening them after switching the hot end. Moreover, the position of the breakout board is inconvenient for removing the heat cartridge cable since it is covered by a piece of metal that has a thread for holding the hot end cover. So, the process of switching between hot ends may take longer and more steps than you would expect from a quick swap hot end. 3. The dual cooling fans are 4010 blowers. They work just fine when printing at speeds of 50 to 60 mm per second, but they aren't enough when I attempted to increase the printing speed to 150 mm per second for a Benchy. The hot end and the extruder manage to keep up, but the cooling fans are just too weak for higher printing speeds. 4. Considering the machine uses a strain gauge and uses the nozzle to probe the bed for auto bed leveling, it shouldn't be too challenging to integrate an auto Z offset feature similar to what's found on the Prusa MK4, which use similar hardware. By incorporating this, the Magician X2 could become a super beginner friendly machine that prints right out of the box. 5. As for the firmware, I would suggest a few improvements in the next update. First, when you select Adjust Baby Steps to set the Z offset, the print head moves to the center of the bed, which is fine, but the X, Y, and Z axes are all moving together. If the Z offset value was set too low previously, the nozzle is going to scratch the bed. To avoid this, it would be better to wait for the X and Y axes to finish their movement before moving the Z axis down. This way, even if the Z offset is set too low for any reason, it won't damage the print surface. Second, when you preheat the printer, it should not continue heating indefinitely. There should be a timeout feature in the firmware. Occasionally, I have preheated the printer and forgotten to continue with the printing process and went off to do something else. In such cases, the firmware should automatically turn off all heaters after a certain period of time if nothing else happens. Finally, since this printer is quiet, it would be better if the firmware only activated the hot end fan when the hot end exceeds a certain temperature. This adjustment would make this already quiet printer even quieter. In conclusion, the Magician X2 is a solid printer. You will not see any other budget or mid-range printer that comes with this many custom injection molded parts. If you are not looking for fast printing, the overall print quality is pretty good when you print at a regular speed of around 50 to 60 mm per second. It can also handle engineering grade materials like polycarbonate and nylon carbon fiber if you spend another $30 to purchase the high temperature hot end. So, a total cost of around $300 would let you print a broad range of filament. As the assembly is easy, you just need to set the Z offset using the screen menu, and it's going to print well, so I would also consider this to be a beginner-friendly machine. If you are interested in the Mingda Magician X2, I put the link under the description. That's all I wanted to share about this machine. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.